Are laptop cooling pads even worth it? Well, today we're gonna go ahead and find out by testing the top 20 best-selling laptop coolers over on Amazon. I made a video just like this last year, but since then the market for laptop cooling pads has changed quite a bit. And there have been some new releases that I've tested that have really shocked me this year. So I wanted to go ahead and update my ultimate laptop cooling pad roundup with some more coolers, better testing, and additional laptops with different styles of laptops to better understand what's the best laptop cooler you should be using. So before diving into any kind of benchmarks, let's run over some of the various types of coolers that we'll be testing here today. I'd break these coolers down into two main categories. First off, we have traditional laptop coolers. These typically will have one or more bottom mounted fans with some kind of graded ventilation on top. And this includes Amazon's best seller, the Habit 3 Fan Laptop Cooling Pad, as well as one of my favorites from last year, at least for budget options, the Kaibin 2 Fan Laptop Cooler. In total, we have about 15 of these style laptop coolers, then the rest are what I would consider specialty coolers. These basically tape cooling to a different level by changing the way that the cooling is actually done, or they design a specific method to get the air into your laptop. These include the likes of the IETS GT500 V2, GT300, Climb Everest, Lano laptop cooling pad, which all follow a very similar approach of using a much higher RPM fan that force feeds air into the system by using some kind of foam or rubber pad preventing cool fresh air from escaping out the sides like a lot of the traditional laptop coolers. Lastly, we also have a very unique cooler from Navazip, which is a thermoelectric laptop cooler that I recently tested out, which uses a Peltier module to go ahead and try to provide sub ambient cooling temperatures to your laptop. So as you guys can see, we have a number of laptop coolers to test. But here before we go ahead and move forward to actually see how well each of these performed, I went out and went ahead and bought two additional laptops for my testing in addition to my older ASUS GL522, which I've used in previous testing for all my other videos. The reason for this is I wanted to go ahead and test different styles of laptops for intake and exhaust and to see if it made any difference when it came to cooling as some cool laptops are way more cooling dependent to go ahead and reach higher boost clocks. So let's go ahead and run over the laptops that we ended up picking up. The first of these two new laptops I bought to represent the lower end of the gaming PC market is this HP Victus, which has an AMD Ryzen 5 7535HS and an NVIDIA RTX 2050. The other laptop I bought to go ahead and represent the top end of the gaming market is this ASUS Strix G16, which is an Intel Core i9-13980HX and an RTX 4070, which makes the system an absolute beast when it comes to gaming, but despite having a really good cooling solution, this system still runs really hot as you'll see in just a couple minutes. Between these three laptops, I first wanted to go ahead and show off how well these coolers perform under an idle condition. And after doing so, we could see that across the board that the Lano laptop cooler performed by far the best out of all the other coolers out there. But in reality, these temperatures really don't matter all that much compared to our stress test, which to go ahead and run this, I ran a full load stress test using ADA64 system stability test, which found for the older ASUS that the Lano and IETS GT500 V2 performed by far the best by a pretty considerable margin once again. And this seemed to be the case across the board for all three laptops. When diving into the data, besides seeing a couple of noticeable contenders that did start to go ahead and show up, particularly for the rear exhaust coolers of the Strix and HP laptops. This included the Kaioli 13 fan and the IETS GT300, which I'm gonna go ahead and keep following in our next test. On average, for the winning coolers of that test, for the ASUS and the HP, we're seeing temperatures drop on average over 20 degrees compared to the stock configuration. And for the Strix, it was about five to 13 degrees depending on the test that I ran. And likely this has to do with how boosting works for the more modern laptop for the ASUS Strix. So next up was our GPU thermal test where we loaded each system up with Furmark to go ahead and see how well these coolers could handle a full GPU load. And we found that the Lano laptop cooler and the IETS GT500 V2 performed once again really well here with a few new dark horse candidates showing up, including the Climb Everest that I actually had some really high hopes for coming into this test because I hadn't tested it out but heard great things about it, and Amazon's best seller, the Habit 3 fan, which is ahead of the budget traditional coolers right now. So with all these thermal benchmarks out of the way, the next thing I wanted to do was go ahead and test 
how well these temperatures would translate into performance. Because something you may or may not realize is that most modern hardware out there operates off of some kind of turbo boost system, where basically if there's thermal and power headroom, the CPU and GPU will continue to push their clocks higher and higher, resulting in better performance. Why this ends up mattering is if you have limited thermal headroom, you can start to see slower performance. So to simulate everything from gaming to productivity work like web browsing, photo and video editing, along with 3D rendering, I ran two main tests. The first is Performance Test 11 from Passmark, and the second is PC Mark 10. Starting off with Performance Test 11. On the older Asus laptop, we found that the Lano laptop cooler was able to boost performance by about 4.22% better than the stock configuration. And the surprise here was that the Lions 2 fan cooler was also able to go ahead and keep up starting to show why it did so well last year in my last roundup. When it came to the HP laptop, the results looked very similar, and I'm starting to notice this trend here where both the Asus Strix and the HP that both use some newer versions of turbo boosting technologies take advantage of any kind of additional headroom a lot more than the older Asus. Particularly for large laptop coolers, it made a big difference here. And the top three here seem to be high RPM specialty coolers like the Lano, IETS, or the Klein. The Strix basically was a near image of the HP like I just said, and this really seems to be following the hypothesis I had when going into this testing that there was actually definitely going to be a gap here between the higher powered coolers when it came to the more cooling dependent laptops. Continuing our testing with PC Mark 10, which was a little bit of a longer and more detailed test, the gap for the coolers really started to narrow for the Strix and HP here, with the same trend pretty much being followed, that the Lano and IETS were leading the pack, but when we look at the older Asus, we also got some mixed results uh, with some of the large fan designs starting to pick up some wins here, which is actually kind of interesting to see. And I think this may be a result of the side mounted exhaust allowing for some of the heat to kind of be expelled um, because this laptop is a little bit more narrow on the sides. So I think that's kind of where that may have been coming from is it was able to go ahead and push some of that heat away faster, at least compared to the rear mounted exhaust. See, with considering all the performance tests that we already ran, one other aspect that really has to be considered when selecting the best option for your needs is noise. And after measuring the noise output of every cooler, it looks like despite the great performance, the Lano is by far the loudest out there by a considerable margin with the Kine and the Lines 2 fan coolers running at one of the lowest noise spike, really solid performance across the board. Now with noise out of the way, you also wanna go ahead and consider price. So here's a list of all the laptop coolers with their current price being sold on Amazon. So we definitely have a wide variety of pricing that we do need to consider when drawing conclusions. Speaking of conclusions, we definitely answered the questions that additional cooling for modern laptops does lead to better cooling and a slight increase when it comes to performance and running various tasks. So for me, I think there are a few options to definitely consider here if you're looking to pick up a cooler. If you want the absolute best laptop cooler out there on the market for your high powered gaming laptop or portable workstation, and you really don't mind the loud noise or lack of portability, as you will need a wall power outlet to go ahead and power the Lano laptop cooler, this is the cooler to buy. It's expensive, but it performs hands down the best out there. Next, if you're looking for a budget friendly option for let's say a less thermally challenged laptop, then I definitely recommend going with something like the Kaibin 2 fan or the Lines 2 fan, which both punch way above their weight class and only cost around $12 on Amazon while improving performance and cooling. I think the Lines is a hair better across the board, but they're basically identical. Additionally, two notable mentions I will consider include the IETS GT300 for upper mid-range laptops. This performed quite well, but it is a little loud and expensive, so keep that in mind. And for mid-range users, I would probably also look at the Ice Coral K9 as it finds kind of a sweet spot for performance gain and price for mid-range laptops. Before I get to my overall winner, let me first mention I probably wouldn't recommend anyone pick up the NavaZip thermoelectric cooler, as although the performance is pretty good, for the price around $70, I would just say stay away from it. So I think the thermoelectric idea is great, but I still think it needs some work and it draws a lot of unnecessary power, at least in my experience, as it can't be powered by a normal USB port. So with all this mentioned, my personal recommendation for anybody that asks me, what laptop cooler should I buy? My recommendation is always gonna turn back to the IETS GT500 V2. As although it's expensive, it's cheaper 
and quieter than the Lano laptop cooling pad while performing around on par with it. And there really isn't a laptop out there that I don't believe that this cooler can handle with ease which I can't really say about a lot of the other coolers out there on the market. If you guys want to check out any of the various laptop cooling pads I tested in this video, I'll have a link to every single one, including the winners in the video description down below. And if you guys have any additional coolers you want me to test, let me know in the comments. And if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to check out last year's roundup, you can go ahead and check out that video right here. And make sure you go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one.